Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at the 2019 exam. This is question number one, set two. It's all about an economy with an inflationary gap. Let's get into the question. It means inflation goes up, you got it? So this question is all about Artland. Artland is currently operating above their full employment output. That means they have an inflationary gap. We're going to start off by drawing an ASAD model for this economy. To do that, first label your axes. You have real GDP on that x-axis, price level on that y-axis. You have a downward sloping aggregate demand curve, an upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve. Then mark the current equilibrium output and price level, Y1 and PL1 as the question indicates you should. Now we need to draw in a long run aggregate supply curve, but before we do that we need to keep in mind that the economy is currently producing more than the full employment output. That means the long run aggregate supply curve should be to the left of the current equilibrium output. Draw that in and label the output underneath that long run aggregate supply curve as YF. And you've got your points for this part. For part B, we're going to assume that the central bank and the government engage in no monetary policy or fiscal policy to close this inflationary gap. What will happen in the long run if no discretionary policies are taken? Well, we will eventually return to long run equilibrium. The way that happens is it's always the short run aggregate supply curve that brings us back to long run equilibrium. In this case, to close that inflationary gap, we need to show a leftward shift of that short run aggregate supply curve. Draw in that short run aggregate supply curve, shift to the left, and show the increase in the price level as a result of that shift. And you've got your point. For the second part of B, we need to explain the mechanism that causes the short run aggregate supply curve to shift to the left, closing that inflationary gap. The mechanism comes from the fact that workers are being overworked because the economy is producing greater than the long run potential. Overworked workers will eventually demand higher wages. Other resource prices will also increase because other resources are being used to their maximum potential. When those wages increase and other resource prices increase, that causes there to be an increase in input costs for businesses, and that is the mechanism that causes the short run aggregate supply curve to shift to the left. In order to get this point, all you need to do is specify that wages will increase. Wages are inflexible or sticky in the short run, but in the long run, they will flex and they will adjust, bringing us back to long run equilibrium. If you just say wages increase, you've got your point. For part C, we're going to change up the scenario a little bit. Before, the central government and the Federal Reserve were engaging in no fiscal policy and monetary policy action to close the inflationary gap. Now, the federal government is going to engage in fiscal policy to close it. What fiscal policy options do they have? Remember, fiscal policy is about taxing and government spending. If we are having an inflationary gap, that means that the government needs to decrease aggregate demand in order to close that gap. Increasing taxes would decrease disposable income and reduce consumption and in gross investment. If the government decreases government spending, government purchases will decrease. Either of those options will close the inflationary gap. In order to get this point, all you need to do is identify one of those options, increase taxes or decrease government spending, and you'll get your point. For the second part of C, we need to identify what will happen to the unemployment rate and the natural rate of unemployment as a result of this contractionary fiscal policy. The contractionary fiscal policy will cause the aggregate demand curve to shift to the left, decreasing equilibrium output for this economy. That's how this fiscal policy closes the inflationary gap. That lower output will mean there's an increase in unemployment because output and unemployment are inversely related. For the natural rate of unemployment, that is, remember, structural unemployment plus frictional unemployment. 
Since there's nothing in this question that indicates that frictional unemployment, time between jobs, and structural unemployment, usually identified by a skills mismatch, will change, the natural rate of unemployment is also not going to change. So to get this point, just say unemployment increases and the natural rate of unemployment does not change. Part three of question C is a little bit tricky. We have to compare the price level that we had earlier from the leftward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve that resulted from an automatic return to long run equilibrium. That was labeled P2. Now we're gonna see where the price level goes when there is a discretionary fiscal policy option to close that inflationary gap. That caused a leftward shift of the aggregate demand curve resulting in a price level of P3. We're comparing those two. Is P2 higher, lower, or equal to P3? Well, P2 is higher. In order to get this point, just say that, higher. For part D, we have to draw a loanable funds market and show the impact of that increase in taxes or decrease in government spending that we identified earlier in this question. First, let's draw out the graph. On the x-axis, we have the quantity of loanable funds. On the y-axis, we have the real interest rate. We have a downward sloping demand curve and an upward sloping supply curve. Mark that equilibrium real interest rate and that equilibrium quantity of loanable funds. Now, think about what happens when the government increases taxes or decreases spending to the deficit. The deficit is going to decrease. That means the government doesn't have to borrow as much money. There are two ways of showing this on the loanable funds market. Either one is going to get you the point. One way to do it, and this is the most common, is to decrease the demand for loanable funds, which results in a lower equilibrium real interest rate. That decrease in the demand is because the government doesn't have to borrow as much money. So they are demanding less money in the loanable funds market, resulting in a lower real interest rate. There's another way of doing this and it's perfectly acceptable on the AP exam. Instead of decreasing the demand for loanable funds, you increase the supply of loanable funds. The logic here is that the government, since they aren't borrowing as much money, leaves more available supply of loanable funds for private businesses. That increase in the supply still has the same impact on that equilibrium interest rate, and it causes that interest rate to go down. So when you draw this out, either decrease the demand or increase the supply. Mark that new lower equilibrium interest rate and you'll get your point. For the last part of this question, we have to explain what will happen to the long run aggregate supply curve as a result of the lower interest rate that we just identified. Well, here's the chain of events that occurs. Lower interest rates mean that there will be an increase in the quantity of gross investment. Gross investment is primarily purchases of physical capital, at least based on the AP exam, that's the assumption. That increase in purchases of physical capital means that there is an increase in the capital stock within the economy. More physical capital means more growth. And how do we illustrate that on the ASAD model? It's illustrated as a rightward shift of that long run aggregate supply curve. So to get this point, you say the long run aggregate supply curve shifts to the right because the lower interest rate will increase investment and the capital stock. And there you have it. If you got all of that right, you are on your way to acing your next economics exam. If you like this video, please like and subscribe below. And if you have any questions, ask them in the comments. Then head over to reviewecon.com where you can find lots of games and activities to help you practice the skills necessary in economics. If you want to support this channel even more, head over to reviewecon.com and purchase the total review booklet with everything you need to know to do well on the microeconomics and macroeconomics exams. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys next time.